everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Bishop's RV down here uh, actually at Jayco today getting uh, some updated footage for you on the 26 FK Whitehawk. This is a floor plane. They were a little slow to adopt. Some other people definitely beat them to the punch by several years, but they executed it, I think, in a very nice way. It has a bigger, more open feel than most brands, but I think it's because of the crazy shape of the nose cap on this. It creates a massive counter space that is frankly so deep, it makes me almost wonder a question I almost would never ask. Is it potentially too much counter space? And I know that sounds crazy and that goes against everything I've said in so many videos, but the fact is it's so deep that I have to practically lay on my belly and stretch my long arms to get to some of those front countertop corners. So I think this is a model where you may want to like employ some crafty locations for some appliances, for some uh, decorations. To, but the thing is, that means that you can leave your normal prep space wide open and available. This is uh, carpetless, so it's easy cleaning uh, all through the slide. True queen bed slide in the back, but instead of a rear wall closet, which adds a lot of extra length, weight, and cost to the RV, it's just a big closet and wardrobe and dresser drawer storage straight across from the bed. Very, very Rockwood style. And without question, this is very inspired by a Rockwood floor plan that I've I've recorded multiple, multiple times if you'd like to compare. But, you know, Rockwood does one of these, Freedom Express, Whitehawk does one of these, and they all do it a little bit differently, and they all do some other things really cool, like Whitehawks have Goodyear radials and wide stance stability axles and tire pressure monitoring. Um, they're 0 to 100 degree rated, and very few builders of this layout can boast something like that. Now, to be fair, the RV does have two-stage travel access where you're going to have to use both doors to get to everything. It does have a fairly hefty hitch weight, so probably you're going to want to be three-quarter ton pickup. Um, it's got a couple things like that. Some good, some bad. I'm going to show you good and bad, try to give you a fair estimation of this thing to decide if it's the right one for you. And if you appreciate that, like our video if you're a return member of the RV Nerd Herd, or just leave me a note to say thanks, nerd, or whatever. So starting off here, let's say you just woke up in the morning. You come out of your rear queen bedroom. This is kind of what you're looking at right here. Now, obviously, you're probably not watching TV from this angle, but you're not really intended to. One thing I do want to kind of point out, you can see the, I, I don't I don't know, bracketry, I, whatever, the bracket for the TV right there. Um, it's not a swing arm. It's actually just a, a, a quick release on off kind of TV. I don't know that this war plan needs a swing arm, but it was just a little bit of a surprise. Now, all of our windows have blackout roller shades, which is something that on a hot day like this can be real awful nice. And for 24, they have tweaked around and um, updated the, uh, the, the dining table over here. And it's interesting because it's now free floating. It folds down, you can store it under the bed so it takes up almost no space. And there's like a big steel plate on the bottom of that table that it attaches to. Uh, so, you know, it's heavy, it's sturdy. Uh, but th that's the kind of thing. When you're folding it up down into a sleeper, like if you have a little guest or something like that, it's a bit to manipulate. So depending on, you know, how good you are maneuvering stuff, depending on your age, like my grandmother, I don't think my grandmother would be able to handle that thing, but it's not necessarily a problem, I think, for most people. Entry door over there is a nice 30-inch wide door. Where that's really cool is if you're outside grilling or cooking on the campfire or something like that, it is really, really nice to sort of have, uh, you know, that extra coverage. Now, we're actually out here at the visitor center today. You see the fellow with the old fishing hat. I do think we may hear that door open in about three seconds and we might have a surprise guest. We'll see how everything turns out. Uh, this is kind of, you know, their time. I can always wait a little bit. I might have to pause the video and let them sort of do their thing a little bit. Now up here, the uh, and in case you're hearing the banging around, that's somebody checking the uh, slam latch baggage doors outside. Um, the, the counter space. This is what I was saying. Is there such a thing as too much counter space? And what I mean by that is this thing is deep. This is deep, deep counter space right here. And uh, if you notice, like if I use the sink cover as a bit of a reference point right here, I shove that all the way up in the corner. You see how big these actually are. Um, you know, without something like, I, I don't walk around with a basketball in my back pocket to kind of give you a reference point. So I want to use things that you can find around the camper. That counter space is probably at least three foot deep. Now with my long arms, I don't have a problem reaching that. But again, my smaller grandmother, my wife, they are a little bit more gravity friendly. It would be a bit of a challenge for them. So it's a thing to maybe consider on this one. But it also means you can use that upper shelf that goes above the pass-through as like a decoration station, an appliance shelf, or whatever you want it to be, so that everything else on either side of the sink or stove is just all functional prep space. So 
you might be able to turn what I call chicken poop into chicken soup, um, which is a closely guarded family recipe, mind you. Down below here, uh, you will not find floor vents in here. They are able to achieve zero to 100 degree capability uh, with cabinet side ducted heating. Some RVs can do that. Some RVs can, it just kind of depends on the layout, the heating system and a hundred other things. This is that uh, refrigerator door that can open either direction and that black slot next to it, the RV actually includes its own handy little picnic table, which I think is kind of cool. Now up top here, you can see how we do have a big XL vent fan. A lot of times people prefer to see those in the bathrooms. I, I don't blame you, that's not a bad thing to find in a bathroom. But what this does have uh, is the smaller fan in the bathroom. They put the biggest fan in the biggest room to give you the most airflow where you need it. And with the frameless windows, that fan is something that might really, really help uh, with the airflow issue. Now, they, uh, it, it's tricky to try to put outlets in this one, so I really appreciate the pop-up power towers with the household and USB plugs in that, and little comfort, ease of use function detail factors. The, uh, the double light switches over there on the slide sides, you can actually turn the lights in the slide above you on and off without having to get up, which I think is kind of cool. And uh, Whitehawk was one of those first Jayco's that adopted the carpetless slide system. And whenever you make the main floor and the slide floor match, it looks good. Now they've been doing a little bit longer than some manufacturers. Some manufacturers really have trouble keeping that corner not uh, looking like a, a strip of bacon, you know what I mean? Um, Jayco obviously has cracked the code on that. I've been told uh, you have to use a little bit better grade of flooring to accomplish it. Then again, that could be Jayco just trying to puff themselves up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying I would be above it. I'm just saying. Uh, the little swivel stands that you get with either the hide bed that's available as an option or the theater seat that we're looking at right here can be really handy. You could outfit this with a freestanding table instead of the booth dinette as well. So I'm kind of curious. What combination of booth dinette and um, sofa would you, or well, not booth dinette, but what variety of dining and sofa would you prefer? Now, I wanna key you off into something on that front kitchen while we're totally not looking at the front kitchen. The overhead cabinet space, it's really cool that it's there, but they went with good deep or, uh, cabinet space, which means it's a bit of a head knocker. And I got two bonks on my forehead today to prove it. So you're gonna wanna kinda keep that in mind if you're bigger like me. Looking at all the storage here, right by the entry door. I'm gonna call the bottom drawer like, you know, socks and gloves and hats and things like that. But um, that's adjustable shelving. You could convert that into more of a closet space. And again, you, it, the RV includes that floating table. I don't think you need to use it as counter space in this one. I guess theoretically you could, but small space like this, it would probably just mostly get in the way. Um, White Hawk, does use a little bit smaller oven than like a Rockwood or a Cougar. Um, similar size oven to something like Freedom Express. So if oven cooking is important to you, uh, that might be worth considering. But also keep in mind the fact that a lot of manufacturers are actually phasing out ovens and they're just doing something like a convection air fryer. And I'm curious, do you think it's good the White Hawk included an oven, albeit a small one, or would you rather they adopt the convection air fryer wave that seems to be kind of floating through the RV industry right now. And if you remember these last year, the decor had a lot of multiple different wood tones all kind of smashed together in one another. And there's still a couple little accents here and there, but overall they combined their two previous decors into one decor instead of vintage or farmhouse, you now have vintage farmhouse. That's a real thing, by the way. And um, overall, I like it. I think they did a, I think they did a pretty good job. Now, uh, back here, by the way, that is a smart TV. I've got the handy little Roku remote uh, sitting down there for you. You've got yourself a little thermistor. That is a temperature sensor, in case you were kind of curious. Um, the uh, bathroom is a dual entry bath arrangement. That's going to become very handy when it comes to travel mode. You probably don't need that quite so much uh, while you're at your destination. But looking around here, I do like the full big medicine cabinet. It is a radius shower. It's also a radius ceiling. So that barreled ceiling gives me the headroom that I need in there. But those radius showers, depending on which angle you stand, can be limiting an elbow room capacity. So kind of keep that little factor in mind right there. Now, down below here, you have a porcelain foot flush stool that, um, you know, you can't watch TV from it, but you can still engage in a turn your le uh, neck left uh, staring contest with the person on the sofa, if you feel like it. And you may have noticed me reaching into a cabinet above. There is a handy little cabinet right up here that, uh, you know, just every, a little space for towels, something, you know, a little space like that goes a long way better than nothing. And in case you're curious, I'm, uh, I mentioned it earlier, but again, it is the small vent fan here in the bathroom. You can outfit these 
Uh, as 50 amp, you can build them with second air. That's where the second air would be located. This one obviously does not have that done. And uh, something else that a lot of people wanted. A lot of people are saying, you know, it's like the bedroom's one color, the bathroom's one color, the living room and kitchen are uh, like all kinds of different colors. Can we just get one decor for the RV, please? And that's what they've adopted here. So hope you like what you see. It was based on your input. That is a true queen bed, by the way. And inside the slide box on both sides, you see these handy little side stands with household and you. USB plugs on both sides. Now, a lot of manufacturers are finally starting to adopt some USB type C plugs, which is great if you've got like um, a wireless charge pad or like a new phone that just needs more juice or something like that, you know. Looking down here under the bed, you can see it is easy lift. There's plenty of storage there. And then looking across from the bed, that's where you actually have the essentially the majority of your closet space. So the hanging closet towers that you'd find in a north south bedroom you have them here. They're just directly across from the bed. And then down below it, you just have tons of dresser space. So you're actually gaining storage as a result. And what's really crafty and cool about this bedroom, Rockwood was really the one that kind of cracked the code on it. It allows you to have an east-west bed slide without actually extending the RV. It's super, super slick. The travel access on this is not bad. It, you can get to some good kitchen stuff, the bedroom and the bathroom, but it is two stage. So we're up here in the, the front living room area. I've got the slide closed right behind me currently. And you know, if you kind of peek over my shoulder here, you see that if I need to, I can wander up to the refrigerator. I can get up here uh, to the sink space. So that is really handy if you want to stop and have a snack. But if you want to do anything else, we're going to have to go through door number two. Kind of pun intended. By the way, if you're listening, that's the sound of this air conditioner on full bore. I think my voice is probably booming over top of it. Is it the whisper ducted system of their fifth wheels? No. Is it terrible? I don't think so. But again, for bedroom and bathroom access, you are going to have to use the second entry door. Keep in mind, a little bit of that mattress does overhang. That's part of the reason that closet sticks out a little more, not to mention it gives you room for like coat hangers. But the back door can get you to the bed. It can get you to the bathroom. If you need to stop and wash the travel off of you, you can do that. Or if you just need to stop and have yourself a little uh, unscheduled potty break, you have the capacity. Something I touched on when the video first began, towing recommendation. Um, you look at the empty weight on this and you think, oh man, half ton could probably handle that. It's got the wide stance axles. That's supposed to help, right? Yeah, that's true. But having a full living room super slide in front of the axles like that, uh, it creates a pretty hefty hitch weight. So as a result, my generalized towing recommendation is going to be a three quarter ton pickup. Now, if you've got a very hefty payload on your half ton, you're not going super far through mountains or something like that. Maybe, yeah, you know, for some local towing. They're still doing 30 pound tanks, which is almost becoming a rarity. Um, I think 20s are okay, but they are giving you greater propane capacity, which is nice because this is cold camp rated. And if you're cold camping, you are going to murder your propane uh, reserve. So having a little extra time between swaps, uh, which can allow you to sort of, you know, shop the propane prices from day to day certainly doesn't hurt. And this is kind of cool. Most front kitchens like this don't have a full pass through. Coachman's generally pretty good about it. Uh, but Whitehawk obviously caught on to that note. And uh, you can see your, your battery disconnect switch down there. I really wish they would raise that up a little bit just so that it wouldn't be quite as susceptible to shifting cargo in transit. Tankless on demand water heater and furnace, but both over here on the, well, that sounded like I said tankless on demand furnace that's that's not what it is it's an on-demand water heater the water heater and the furnace are both over here in the campsite of the rv not my favorite but considering the other side of the rv is like pure slides they didn't have a choice the reason i don't always like it over here is because it can put a hot air exhaust on the campsite of the rv i don't get too uh annoyed about it though on an rv like this uh that's more of a fam uh, couple's model than a family model less likelihood of kids running around there's that little black fbi listening device dot right there above the stovetop exhaust vent hood that is actually an exterior thermistor the rv uh, can tell you exterior ambient temperature separate from just your interior temperatures, which is kind of a cool thing that they do right here. Now we've got some Goodyear tires with wide stance stability axles, and that helps uh, the RV tow like it feels a little bit shorter than it actually is. And you might notice uh, they, uh, if you got up close and personal on them anyway, those have blue valve stem caps with a little low pressure indicator on them. That actually has TPMS integrated into the tire, not like a valve stem cap variety that could potentially pop off. 
And somebody left a, a comment the other day, and, and I respect it. I, I, they they could have gone about it in a better way, but they're like, obviously you don't know what you're talking about. Do you want to go have your tires serviced regularly to, to check the, the TPMS banding? I, I mean, if I'm going to be towing a lot where TPMS is important to me, I'm probably going to have my axles and bearings checked anyway. So I don't, personally, I don't think it really bothers me. Now, uh, you can option the rear bumper griddle uh, on the, that you see like the bracket for right there. And you see the gas grill quick connect. That will always be on the back. And as we know, nerdism number 37, when the gas comes out the backside, well, that's a propanus right there. Whereas uh, if it comes off the side side, that's that's a cooker hooker. There's back side and side side. Those are very, very critical differentiators. 250 pound rated uh, roof ladder to get you up top to that plywood decked Magnum Truss roof system. All those words do mean something. Jayco's roofing is rated to hold more weight per square foot than anybody else in this class, at least of which I am aware personally. We do have a uh, reverse travel lighting, but a lot of these travel trailers, Whitehawk included, no longer have standard default J-Smart lighting. Um, some of the floor plans were generally uh, shorter and didn't necessarily need it. This one's kind of borderline. I, I wouldn't have been offended by it, but they had to kind of make a, a call clear across the entire family, and this one didn't make the cut. The underbelly, enclosed, forced air heated, protected, insulated, and if you notice, one of the things they did here that is just absolutely awesome, it is a single sewer outlet. And I think that is very, very cool. But I am actually looking up in front of that slide and I do see a couple pull handles right there. I'm not sure if those are dump gate valves or if those are like a, a, a freshwater tank drain for the end of the season. I'm afraid one of them might actually be a dump gate valve under that slide which is not my favorite location for one of those. I'll try to get you a better look at that. On the way though, slide side windows, uh, well, slide, open for airflow, whereas our sidewall windows are uh, frameless, which looks just smexy as all get out, but it does uh, provide a little bit less airflow, so it's worth kind of keeping that in mind. Interesting little location for the uh, cold utility, or hot cold utility shower here. Now, uh, this is a rack and pinion slide for your big living room, and oh man, I'm that's a bummer. So. The, the, the pole handle that's further under the belly, that is your freshwater uh, pole for like end of season, but that is your kitchen gray tank right there. If you got long arms like mine, you could squat down like I'm doing, you could probably still pull that, but if you're not quite as spry, that might be a little bit of a problem for you. And that's a bit of a bummer to report, but I hope you appreciate that kind of like the road mode, opening up all the storage and everything. I will go out of my way to show you what you are or maybe are not getting for that hard earned money that you're putting into this thing because you work hard for that money. So hard for it, honey. So I'd be kind of curious to know what you think about this one and how you think it compares to some of the other builders of a layout like this. And to help you with that, I'll leave you a link in the video description, both to check for pricing and availability on this model, but also um, like the Rockwood, the Freedom Express, the other versions of something like this, Heritage Glen and Hemisphere also do a pretty good one. It's a little bit longer, but it actually does have washer dryer uh, prep in the, uh, in the rear bedroom on a rear wall closet that this one doesn't have. So they all do a couple cool things. I'd love to know which one you'd prefer to go with and why. And until next time, I'm tired. Holy cow. Take care. Stay safe. Have fun. And stay hydrated, everyone. Woo!